Hello, my friends! Today is an extra special day because two years ago today, I posted my first video to this channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Dee, and I started making YouTube videos when I started playing Minecraft. This video is going to be a special one for this special day. I'm going to go through all of my survival builds in chronological order and rank them. My building skills have come far, and I'm excited to go back and see that whole journey. We've got a surprise at the end too, so make sure you stick around to see it. Let's go ahead and start by taking a good look at each build. Of course, we're going to start all the way back at the very beginning. This little Scandinavian style cabin in the frozen region of my first world. I really, really love the shape of this one. Like for my very first build, really good job, I think. The fact that the front door is immediately over a drop-off, eh, not quite as great. You can't really use the front door all that much. But then if we come inside, this little kitchen, I attempted some detailing with like pipes and the random spigot up in the wall. There, there were some interesting choices, let's say. The little bay window though, 10 out of 10. I love this thing. Stairs was a really fun area to work on. We kind of did like a temporary divider wall for the actual bedroom. Uh, this fish tank is, it was a choice. And then we've got an enchanting area, a little fireplace, all of that, and a balcony, which is honestly really awesome. I love this balcony very much. There's a lot of wool in this interior. I used a lot of wool and I don't think it does. I don't think it's a bad choice, actually. Like, something about the wool does feel a little bit just cozy. So, yeah. Then we have our basement, which, yeah, it, it exists. Also, this bubble column was my very first redstone, and man, I was so proud of myself for figuring out how to follow the tutorial for a block swapper. How far we've come. But one of the quirkier quirks about this build is this little spot in the roof, like most of the roof very much hit the mark. I like the slope of it and the way the two slopes kind of intersect. I love the deep slate, the, the, the chimney and that little porch need help. But then I put this random mangrove spot in. I, I don't know why, guys. I don't know what I was thinking. I just decided to put a little bit of mangrove in there. It, it happened. We'll, we'll roll with it. But all in all, I really love this cabin, and it was a great start, not gonna lie. At this point, I jumped right into my 30 Days of Building series, where I learned a lot, but it's in creative and, well, there's there's 30 builds. So we're gonna pass over those for today. I'm not a big creative player, but I did learn a good amount from that series. The next survival build was actually on Vervain's Arcadia, which has been my first and only multiplayer experience so far. I genuinely love this build so much. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I could have done differently here, but it really encapsulates the vibe of Fish Camp, I feel like. Got our fish wheel, which I adore. I love this thing so much. And the cabin's really cute with the little grass and moss roof and the little canoe here, which like, okay, that that's a bit of a stretch. Like, there are no canoes at fish camp. It's all motorboats, but it's fine. And then of course we have our fish cleaning station. I'm realizing now I should have put like a smoker somewhere, some smoking or drying racks around. Those would have been perfect. Also, the interior is really simple, but we do have a wood stove, but like an oil barrel wood stove. So 10 out of 10 there. This was a great start for this particular base and everything that I've done in this area. So I love it. The very next video after the fish camp featured me overhauling the spawn village back in my single player world. And like, there were some good things. I really love the gate design that I came up with and technically it's set up to be a three by three piston door, but obviously that's uh, not what it is at the moment. But it is set up with space for redstone inside the walls of the gatehouse. Then we start looking at like the actual builds and they're, they're 
Okay, I guess. They're very colorful, which I love, but they're small and blocky. I do like this one. This one's cute, but honestly, that's, that's the best building in this entire village. I don't know why the Fletcher lives underneath the butcher, but such as it is, I remember being kind of proud of this particular house. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, good gravy. I do really like the wall design as well. One build that I was really proud of because, do you see that little swoop-de-doo on the roof? Oh, I'm so proud of that little swoop-de-doo. Was this little like fisher, uh, fisherman's hut thing? So all in all, like it's not terrible. There's some kind of, kind of decent spots, decent parts of it. And then there's others where I just really question what was going on in my brain. My next build was back on Vervain's Arcadia. In keeping with the Alaskan base theme, I built a geothermal farming area, and not gonna lie, I have a special soft spot for this build. So the center point of this particular area is this greenhouse, which does look a little bit better without connected textures. Obviously, it is full of bees, but also was my primary farming area for a while. The big detail that I like about this one is the fan at the back. Like, it, it definitely could use some work, but it was a really good attempt and attention to detail. But then we walk up into kind of my favorite area, and this area walks a line between terraforming and building. Look at this. Look at this cute little outdoor shower. I love this. And then you keep walking up and you get a little stream which is glass covered because fish. But then you come over into the hot springs themselves. You've got the different like tiered areas of the hot springs. At the bottom of all the hot spring tiers is the big pool, you know? If we swim back in here, well, there's first this cute little room, but then if we swim back through this little secret tunnel, we have a really cute little cave. So with this area, there are some things that I feel like I pulled off really well and some things that like are a little tacky or just not super well made. There are also some really, really cool details in here. All in all, I think I think this area is really lovely. Ooh, one of the things that I did as well was just a couple of these like geothermal cracks in the ground. All right, so this was the point where I came back to this single player world and put an aqueduct coming into this village. If we fly up for a bit of a better look though, you'll see that, um, yeah, we've got floating, floating support pillars, which just, I keep telling myself like, I'll come back and fix that up someday. And well, I've been telling myself that for a year and a half. So, but all in all, it's really cute. I feel like I did a really good job with the slope of it. Like the color looks really good. The weird bits of coral could have been done better. I feel like they really kind of stand out as not fitting in. But the actual shape of the aqueduct too, if you look at it from like straight on, that shape looks really nice. Shockingly, we did another build on Vervain's Arcadia. This one is a gold dredge and was built as my first storage room. So this has like little bits around in it that are reminiscent, I guess, of mechanical structures. We've got bits of rails there, which is like the bottom of the gold sifter is kind of what it looks like to me. You know, just pieces of chimneys and pipes and things like that around. But mostly the interior is just storage. And then we can come out onto the deck, which is one, a very functional area, but two, also has the scooper chain. <laughs> That's the technical term. Yep. Yep. Very technical. We can come out onto the next levels of the deck. I've spent a lot of time at this particular build and I love it very much. Like, it's definitely a unique Minecraft build to begin with and a very challenging thing to build. So the fact that I pulled it off to this extent this early on, I will take that honestly. The next build was also here on Vervain's Arcadia and was my first survival tree. I really like how like the shape of the trunk came out. The piles of snow on top are great. The way I connected up some of the glass and the ice is 
questionable, and I feel like I could have integrated the end rods a little bit better. The enchanting area is sad, but you know what? That's fine. The tree is really the star of the show here. <laughs> After that, we came back to my single player world and built a little villa here in my spawn savanna. Okay, so our spawn point is just past the beacon there and our spawn village is right over there and I wanted to make myself an actual little house in this area. I had been living in a hole for months at that point. Like that's, that's atrocious. The flat roof, the really dark contrasting beams and things and the fact that I left the bottoms of the slabs open instead of just doing like full thickness blocks, I think that was actually a really cool choice that I made because it definitely contributes to like the openness and airiness of the way the build just kind of feels, you know? I feel like I do really well at interiors now and coming back and looking at this is like, how did I do this. I do like the fact that I added a piano. I also think that I could have done better with a piano. Upstairs, little bedroom with little armor stands and a bed and just, again, not a lot. But I think my favorite thing in this house is this chandelier and even how it interacts with the beam. Like it's a little awkward, but I don't hate it. One of the things that I did was I made the roof out of top slabs because I didn't have a lot of nether brick. So, like, a lot of my early builds were built specifically conserving materials so it doesn't attach at the top, which is kind of terrible. This spot definitely has a vibe because of this chandelier specifically. I feel like this little porch terrace kind of thing could have a lot of character and some really cool stuff done with it. As it was, I just kind of left it, which is a little sad. And then came a day that I was so excited about. I built my first shop on the server. I actually designed this build in creative mode, which is really unusual for me, but I really wanted a build that I felt like I could be proud of on a server full of talented Minecrafters. The tower itself is really cute, and I think I did do a good job of building something that I could be proud of here. But a feature that I pass over a little bit too frequently is all of the giant flowers around the outside. We've got our iris and our bluebells, and some lily of the valley and also some fireweed which is another alaskan flower and so i ended up building it under the oh honey shop which has giant bees because i felt like you know giant flowers giant bees perfect excellent build still my favorite shop that i have on this server then we move on back to my starter base where i built another building based off of an actual historic building in alaska this one is based off of the first library from the early 1900s in my hometown, which for years I dreamed about buying and turning into some kind of small business. So here on the server, we turned it into a little coffee house that also houses my two cook. Who? What? Anyways, this cute little coffee shop houses my mud farm, but also was the first like nice interior I did. Like this is the first interior where I feel like, oh, this is really cute. It's got details. I can see what it is. This was about when I started putting icicles on things and piles of snow and playing around with that. If we look up at the roof really quickly, you can see that it is made of slabs for the most part, which kind of sucks when you are building a snowy area. But yeah, I really love that I got to put this building into a place where it'll hopefully live on forever. Also side note, the uh, actual building, which was for sale for most of the time that I lived in Alaska, it got bought up by the Historical Society. So I hope they're taking good care of it. This next build is a shell around my moss farm and it's inspired by native Alaskan beading patterns. I really love the colors. Like the colors are really nice. I tried with this build. I think that with the scale, the small scale that I was building it on, it didn't quite work. 
So yeah, at the end of the day, I still really like the concept. I just think the execution was quite lacking. And then 1.20 dropped. So I skedaddled on over to my single player world since the server was going to take a while to update. And I spent most of that episode exploring, but I also built just a tiny little hut for my original sniffer. And now there's a few more. I feel like this barely counts as a build, but I do really love it, so we're gonna include it. I definitely went through a little phase where all of my builds had little witch hats as roofs, which is really cute and honestly I should probably do again some more. But this build was mostly trapdoors, which is really interesting to me. And I think, hello little Mr. Black Bunny. There's so many black bunnies around here, guys. It's kind of crazy. But I really like how I ended up using the trapdoors along with other blocks to give a lot of depth to this build. I did a little bit of an interior, but it's mostly just like a dirt floor because this is a hut for sniffers, but there's some flowers and shelves and things around. After this, I built a lodge on Vervain's Arcadia. I believe this was my first time using an embroidery pattern in the floor of a build, but it certainly wasn't the last. There, there's, there's good and bad about this build. The interior's not super detailed, but it does have like some of the correct vibes. You don't want to know how much of this I accidentally burned down while building that fireplace. But like this big window, this feels exactly like a ski lodge. Like amazing, I love it. Oh, that glass is really awkward. One of my favorite things is this moose head and then the chandelier, like they look really nice. The roof is interesting. I did a little gradient and I do like the gradient. I think the gradient looks nice. But it's also nothing special as far as a roof goes other than colors. And then this one, it doesn't look great. I don't know if I can really count this one as a build, but it was a fun little feature to add to this starter village. I think these may be officially broken now that we use a newer version of the plugin, but these armor stands did use to move. The actual build of the rink, eh. But at least it's ice and you can also do your own slippy slidey skating things on it, right? As the newness of 1.20 died down, I got back into building with three builds in one episode. This first one was actually built off camera and is a little geodome that houses all my cats. I was trying to make a rabbit foot farm without killing rabbits, but for some reason the cat gifting isn't working quite right. I don't know if that's a server paper thing or what. The interior isn't super special. It's a little bit more utilitarian. Looking at this build from the outside, I really love it. And then I went and built another shop still witchy themed. I really like the shape of this one. I think I would change some things about like the brim of the hat slash edge of the roof. Um, I would shape it a little bit more. The cute little vending machine out front, so adorable, I love it. It's far from perfect and I think there are plenty of things that I would change about it, but I do really like it. And then, still in the same episode, I made this little trapper's cabin at the edge of the snowy village. So one of the fun things about this one is that the snow's kind of melting off the roof. And I really love that. Like it's not executed perfectly, but like the way this, this snow has made a little snow snake fallen off the edge of the roof there, very cute. I don't know why I did the fences around the edges of the windows, they look weird. The bright yellow concrete is literally perfection and of course we have the snowshoes above the door. We've got like a goat skin on the floor. This was my first attempt at using hopper minecarts as a stove and I definitely got that down better later on. And then outside we also have, you know, a few things around our sled dog team here. Ooh, I should bring in a couple of the the husky skinned dogs now that we have those. Of course, the dog sled, which oof. I could have done a lot better with this. Let's let's be honest. I could have done way better. And then of course the four-wheeler. Alright, I don't really know what I would have done differently with this one, because four-wheelers are tough. Small vehicles like that are kind of tough to make in Minecraft. And with the way four-wheelers exist, like. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how I would do this differently. I'd probably spend a little time in creative, not gonna lie. 
But then we can walk right over here for the next one because the next thing I did was make my first custom biome. This one is inspired by the woods that I grew up in, and yes, the trees are this small and scraggly and this thick. But we've got berries and bushes and things on the forest floor, and then if you walk over this way, we have my first custom note block song, too. We've got cute little spots like this little fairy... Ah! We've got cute little spots like this little almost fairy glen spot right off the path. You can wander your way through the forest. If you come back here, you'll find a little flowery area with a sitting log. But then there's an actual fairy circle here, which we're just going to casually walk through like it's not a problem. The flowers are meant to be a little bit of a twin flower representation. They are one of my favorite flowers on the planet. There's definitely a few things I could have done better, a few details I could have added. Um, I've seen the details of sticks with signs underneath carpet. If I had known that that was an option, totally would have done that here. I still might just do it at some point because it sounds really cool. We definitely need things like a few little rocks scattered about, things like that. So it's a little bit more about just needing a little bit more detail. And we're probably going to trigger the song again, aren't we? There are a couple of miscellaneous builds around in the starter area that I don't really remember when they were added. But this hockey arena style build is one of those. If we get close enough, you can see that it has all my goats in here. I do like the striped seating, too. Like, that feels very hockey arena to me. Not that I've been in many hockey arenas. I've been in, like, one. Somewhere around in here, I added this little build to this area. And at this point, I was a little bit burned out by this area, so I didn't spend the time on it that I feel like I should have. It's very meh as a build to me. Like, I'm so underwhelmed by it. I really like the idea, and I would like to try and recreate the, the building that this is based off of. But it's based off of a train station in Alaska. This is where I really started trying out texturing, and that did not go well here. But I feel like if I had detailed this well, it would have actually ended up being a pretty cute little build. It just unfortunately didn't get the love that it deserved. At this point, I had been playing Minecraft for about a year, and I decided to wrap up my starter base by finishing the Four Seasons and adding a fall home on the lake here. After scrapping my original idea for like a rail line that could come to all the different areas of this starter area, I went ahead and decided to add a lore-friendly transportation option. So we have this little plane here, and yes, the elevator was added later after I did this build. I'm so embarrassed that I forgot that. But cute little float plane. I really love the build. It's really adorable. And then we come up into the home. I think the trees could have used a little, a little more work. And you have like your fully grown up garden here, your flowers, even though like at this point in the year, most of the flowers are gone. I didn't spend enough time on it. So the interior is a little bit meh. I do love the floor though. You've got the river rock inset into the more like polished floor plus the bits of bright terracotta. Like this is a very Alaskan floor, you guys. You do not understand. We did do a lot better with our stove option here. So love that. From here, this is where the view out this window is just mwah, so good. I think this area and this build definitely captures the fall vibes for me. Like, I can feel the air being crisper and cooler here. And at the end of the day, isn't that what you want out of a build? Is you want to be able to feel the environment through the screen. And then, my friends, we started the mega base. However, we're not going to dive into that just yet at this point in the video. It's been a really long project and it's not finished yet. So we'll get into it later and we'll go through the different stages of it, but I don't want to like go there and do the first section and then go on. I want to just do it as a cohesive whole. Before we continue on, it's obviously not something that I do in every or even most videos, but I do want to for this one because it's a pretty special episode. I want to give a little shout out to my Patreon supporters. 
You all are so special to me and you help me feel like I'm doing something important and putting value out there. And at this point with, you know, the second birthday of my channel and all of that good stuff, I just wanted to acknowledge that because you guys are a really important part of this channel that most people don't really see. In between my one block world, I started getting really into another redstone phase and that produced one of my favorite builds that I've done. And we can see it emerging in the distance. It doesn't look quite as impressive from this angle. Let's fix that. There we go. There's the jellyfish. Now, I do have a lot of things that, like, I think I would change and fix if I do that again. And let's be real, what's a better nether build, especially for above the roof, than a jellyfish? So I will probably definitely be making more jellyfish in the future. I think if I did this again, what I would probably do is I would probably build the gold farm just one Y level shorter. One or two Y levels shorter so that I could have a little bit of extra space to build up here at the top because this is build limit. If we back out and look at it again, I do really love the sea lanterns around the edge of the jellyfish cap, but I think when it gets down to the tentacles, there there is some lack here. I think they need just a little bit more structure to them, either some like slightly thicker tentacles or tentacles made with solid blocks, or maybe a bit of both. During my redstone era, though, I mostly continued to work on my mega base, did some creative builds with friends, and then threw up a couple of random builds around the server. This one didn't really get a video, but you do see it around from time to time. I think so far this is my favorite tree that I have made. It's still far from perfect, but I was going for a, like, I don't know what kinds of trees they are, but like, I guess like oak trees with Spanish moss on them. I kind of wanted something with that type of vibe. And I think I did get it for the most part. I like how there's little bits of moss and azalea leaves up throughout this, even though it's a tree with pink leaves, pink blossoms and pink leaves, you know? And then the garden itself is really cute. We've got the floating lanterns. We've got a lot of details. I really love this swing. I think bamboo works really, really nicely for these swings. So 10 out of 10 right there, like cozy little spot. One of my favorite little spots to just come be on this server. And then recently, I've been getting back into my building era. I seem to play Minecraft in cycles and I'm working on balancing it out a little more. But I started my World in Progress series back in my original single player world. We started with a big central portal build. So this is on the hill right above World Spawn, which is, look for the beacon, right over there. And I started this series when 1.21 dropped, so first day I was making this tree with tough blocks, which honestly, the superior tree building blocks at this point. I still really struggle with trees, so I can see that like there's a lot of problems with this, but I can't really tell you what they are. Um, I really like the colors. I really like the concepts. I even like the fact that I mixed the green and purple a little bit. But, like, I don't know. It's odd and something is off. And then I piled the flowers around. And I really love these flowers. I really like everything about the style of these flowers and everything. I just don't know that they necessarily fit with the tree. But we're going to leave it as is and see if we can't when we kind of build out the area around this, if we can't make things feel a little more coherent. At the same time as I was getting back into my building era, I started deciding that I was going to make my farms a little bit nicer. I wanted them to be polished with beautiful storage rooms and really cohesive systems. So that determination with my farms started with not one, but two farms that happened in the same episode. But here at the Wither Rose Farm is where I decided I was going to start being like super careful about how I built my farm. I have actually really been enjoying, uh, you may have noticed if you've been around the channel for the last few months that I've started using Purper here and there fairly frequently actually. It, it's not a bad block. You have to find the ways to use it. And like, this isn't the gr the greatest use of it, 
But like, this spot, I think it looks really good. The sister farm to that was the Wither Skeleton farm. And while this staircase is a little, little awkward, just by nature of the farm, to be honest, I really like what we did with the actual, like, killing and storage area. This is pretty. We've got a really cool floor. I really, really, really love this floor design. And of course, we have some nether stars as decoration. I just, I like a lot about this particular farm. This is my XP farm, so I do spend a lot of time here. I just think there's a lot of things that I did right with this particular room. My next episode in the World in Progress series, I built up this gorgeous building around my bamboo and sugarcane farm. It's got some good shapes going on, which is a lot of what I was playing with for this. This tree is one of my favorite things and it's got a bird in it, which is just perfection. This gateway still doesn't sit quite right with me and I'm not sure why, but the rest of this yard, I do really like. It's very chaotic, it's very wild, it's very, a little bit overgrown. All things that I personally love in my own outdoor spaces. We used some bamboo blocks, which doesn't quite go with the color palette of this build, but we kind of went for bright, bold choices around the doorways. And you know, it doesn't look bad. If you look at it for a while, you go, okay, that's a little weird, but I don't think it's bad. I'm finally using glass panes and walls and things like that when I make my builds, so that's an upgrade. A couple of details in here that I really, really love are that I tried using logs in the floor and what an excellent idea that was. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but it adds just a little element of detail to the floor that I really love. It kind of has that feeling of like a knot that you would have in a natural wood floor. This farm runs on daylight detectors, which means that it needs to be able to see the sky in order to function. So that kind of forced me to add that strip of glass in the middle and kind of do some design things that I wasn't initially planning to do or thinking about doing. It's one of those situations where like having a limitation placed on me actually made what I did better. And it's a really lovely place to just kind of come in and harvest some honey as I'm working on planting the many, many, many fields around this area. And then I added my transportation infrastructure to this world, but make it pretty. Each tunnel for each direction has a different style and color scheme to it, and they're all based on different types of crystals. So this one's based on Larimer, it's the blue with the very like rounded random shapes. Meanwhile, our Ocean Jasper tunnel has more perfectly spherical patterns that are integrated over larger patches of color. This side doesn't really go anywhere at the moment because I don't have much out this direction, but this one is inspired by Argonite and it was inspired by specific pieces of Argonite too that were very bright pink with then bits of orange calcite running through them. And I do really like this one and I'm excited to expand on it a little bit more. I do think there needs to be a little more depth and texture in the walls. And then this tunnel here is based on kunzite and specifically pieces of kunzite that also have tourmaline mixed into them. So we've got the purples and we've got the greens and the bamboo and the amethyst go really well together and like People were surprised about that. I was too, not gonna lie, but I really, really like how all these colors work together. Using the purple, the frog lights, it's great. And then the moss goes well, the bamboo goes well. It's just really nice. Most recently in this world, the video dropped a couple of weeks ago, I added this cute little gardener's shed and uh, I love it. This little gardening shed, I really feel like has taken my building skills up a level. It's so highly detailed. We used a lot of color. We did a lot of shading, which you can't really see now when you're just looking at it. You just know there's something, you know? I really wanted a living feeling roof with lots of plants, lots of bits of movement and just little details. And let me show you this interior. It's so tiny, but I love it so much. Listen, guys, 
this thing makes the dopamine in my brain go a little crazy. I love it. And I realized in the video I never actually showed the back here. So it's a little bit more simple, but this is the, the far side of the build. Now, before we move on to the mega base, I think it's time to fully rank all of these because I think we all know which one's gonna be number one on my list. Listen, the mega base is just in a category of its own, all right? There are 30 total builds, so we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up to number one. So, number 30 is going to be the ice rink in my starter base on Arcadia. I really think that that build was terrible. Number 29 is gonna be the moss farm build with the roses. Everything about that one was wrong to me, other than the actual color palette. That is one that I think I would like to try and build in a better capacity though, because I like the concept. Number 28 is going to be the train station for the really terrible texturing attempt and just the fact that I never really actually detailed it in any meaningful way. Number 27 is gonna be the goat hockey arena. Super plain build, but also like did have some of the correct vibes. Number 26 is gonna be the village overhaul. Like on the one hand, I kept the feeling of like a vanilla village, just extra, but like also that's not great build wise. Number 25 is gonna be the aqueduct for a couple of reasons. One, the uh, floating pillars, just that's just a sad thing. And then also the texturing was really bad. Number 24 is gonna be the icy tree. I really loved it when I built it, but the more I look at it, the more like problems I see with it. And yeah, I, I just really don't care for that build anymore. Number 23 is gonna be Witch's Best Friend, my familiar shop in the Vergreens Arcadia Shopping District. There's a lot of like small things I think I could have done a little differently with this one, but the, at the end of the day, the kicker for me is the brim of the hat slash edge of the roof. It's very awkward and I do not like it at all. Number 22 is gonna be the Cat Geodome. Number 21 is going to be the Lodge. There's just a lot of things that sit ever so slightly wrong about it with me. Number 20 is going to be the fall cabin build with the plane on the lake. There were a lot of things about the actual build itself that I would have changed. Like the vibes were there, but the build itself was very meh. Number 19 is gonna be Snort's Hut because even though it's a very tiny build that like barely counts in my book, it's really cute and like the exterior looks really nice, like the actual build looks really nice and there's a lot of good details. It ties into the surrounding terrain really well, I think. Number 18 is going to be the storage room for the Wither Rose Farm and number 17 is going to be the storage room for the Wither Skeleton Farm. Neither of these fully count as builds in my book either, but they both integrated a level of just like building and detail for the actual aesthetics of the rooms. I feel like those builds particularly ended up being a really important stepping stone into my detailed building. Number 16 is going to be the big central portal in this world. That tree is just all wrong for me. Number 15 is going to be the coffee house. There were a lot of good things. I think this was a really important step for me in like the building process, but it doesn't have the same oomph as a lot of my other builds. Number 14 is going to be my very first build, the little Scandinavian cabin out in the frozen area. I love the shape of this build. I think that's one of the biggest things for me, the shape and then just like the combination of materials I used all went together really, really well. And this is genuinely still a build that I go back to and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm proud of this. Number 13 is gonna be the little yellow trapper cabin. I'm obsessed with just how striking it is as a build. Number 12 is going to be the giant cherry blossom tree. Not only is the tree the best tree that I've ever built, but also I really love the surrounding garden area. Number 11 is going to be my gold dredge. I was leaning towards putting this a little farther down on the list, but the fact that I took a real life object that's already just like a confusing thing to look at and even harder than to translate into blocks 
and translated it that well, I will take that. Number 10 is going to be the fish camp, which is, you know, the first build on Vervain's Arcadia and my second build ever. Number nine is going to be my custom biome. There's a lot of detail that I went into with this one. There's definitely a few things that I would add, but there's not much that I would change about it. Number eight is going to be the sandstone villa here in this world. This one's an interesting one for me because I didn't care for it all that much when I built it. I didn't care for it for probably the first year after I built it. And then I've come back into this world and started looking at it again and thinking about like how I pulled it off. And I think it's actually a really good build. The interior's not great, but the actual build was really solid. Number seven is going to be the geothermal farming area. This one really walks the line between straight up terraforming and actual building, but because of that, it's a really like striking and important area and I love it. Number six is going to be my potions shop in the Vervain's Arcadia shopping district. I am still very proud of this build. The texturing definitely needed help. The giant flowers were perfection. The build itself looks really nice. The colors were really good. Shout out to my partner for suggesting yellow glass for the windows and to Radifix for suggesting uh, a little bit of texturing at the bottom to tie things into the terrain. Number five is going to be the jellyfish. I have more and more beef with the jellyfish as I look at it and get better at building myself, but it's still a really solid build. I definitely love seeing it emerge over the nether roof as I fly around on it, and I hope other people do too. Number four is going to be my crystal nether tunnels in this world. I think it was a fabulous idea. I think I did a great job executing it. I'm just obsessed with having those in my world, which is exactly what you want with a build, right? You want to be obsessed with it being in your world. Number three is going to be the solarium. Really solid build. The exterior is so detailed, ties into the terrain and just the surrounding area really well. The shapes are really good. Also, the interior is perfect. I love the interior. I love all the different little bits that we added to it. It is a place where I just love hanging out. Number two is going to be the gardener's shed. That build took my building to a new level, I think, especially in how I think about building and how I intentionally place blocks. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Pearl from Vervain's Arcadia, who sat up with me at an ungodly hour. Fortunately, it was an ungodly hour for me, not for her, and helped me rank all of these. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit of a daunting task, and she helped me just organize all of my thoughts about them and be able to sort everything to a point that I was satisfied about. But I'm curious, what would you change as far as these rankings go? But now, for the build we've all been waiting for. The build that, by nature, is going to have to take number one on my list. The Mega Base! Even though it hasn't gotten many videos recently, I've been steadily working away on it for almost a year now. So, let's start with one of the first sections, the Grand Hall. This is one of my favorite spaces, just like ever. Not even just in Minecraft. If you look at the floor, the floor is an embroidery pattern, down the middle anyways, and I really love it. It's really pretty. It, it encapsulates the vibes of this place perfectly. I am now starting to question my decision to do the um, diamonds on the floor in the wings there. I'm not sure I like that anymore. But then you come up to the end of the hall and there's cracks coming up through the floor and starting to spread and take over this area. And then we have the shattered orb, which was like, you know, the original centerpiece here. There's also little spots in my roof that are broken. And I, I'm, I'm very, the, this base is a little bit haunted, just a little bit. But the ceiling, the ceiling is maybe my favorite thing in this because one, Decorating with nether stars, because you gotta, right? Gotta flex a little. But then we have kind of constellations made up and galaxies made up of crying obsidian and glow lichen. And then the skulk has its little pulsing starriness itself. 
The floating candles around the pillars are another one of my many favorite things about about this hall. I I have literally just like come in and listened to music and kind of Minecraft danced and bounced around here for extended lengths of time. When you enter from the front, you have the snowflake on the floor, the ceiling towers up, there's icicles pouring in. I love the little diamonds in the wall. I think they're perfect. And then these staircases. These staircases are, I don't know, just one of my favorite things. One of my many favorite things about this base. But as we continue through the interior, we come into the area that is a little bit more ruined. The upstairs has been magically sealed away, locked away. It's still in pretty good condition. But down here, things are falling into ruins and in our lore, in modern times, people have started moving in, taking over the space. So there's a lot of like colorful, modern stuff within the ruins. Many of the caves through here are not completed like this one, but one of the big caves that we've spent a lot of time in is down this staircase where we enter my storage room. This is finally starting to feel like fully coherent, like it was part of the castle and it's part of like the caves, the cave systems, the ruins. So you can see remnants of the arches in here. This particular cave also has some magical properties to it with this tree and this little pond build in the back of this cave. We've been adding more and more details. There's now a staircase that goes out the back and even a big old spirally bridgy staircase thing down into the next layer of the cave, which we haven't done a ton of work in yet, but it does have the heart and soul of this base, my tree farm. But there is one cave that we've put so much work into, and no, it is not this one, but this is a new entrance to this cave. That cave is our Grand Mage's living quarters. Now, I have a video that did the entire building process for this one, and I'm gonna put that one up in the corner because this was one of my favorite things to work on and build. This was one of my favorite processes. We have balconies that overlook the storage area, which is pretty cool. We've got a little like bonsai style tree. This area includes gardening spaces. We have things like this little alchemist bench. We've got the cutest little enchanting corner. I love it. Look at the bubbles above the enchanting table. And then we have the actual study with a cute little cozy little fireplace. From here, the lower caves haven't really been touched, but they'll be coming along soon. However, there has been quite a lot of work done on the exterior. Look at this, you guys. I can easily say this has been one of the most exciting secrets I've been working on. There are many, many hours of work represented behind me, but in order to get a closer look, you'll have to wait a week or maybe two, depending and come back to see everything that's happened here. That was a lot of builds. I've been busy the last couple of years, that's for sure. I've come a long way in that time, but especially recently, I feel like my building has really started to blossom. It's been fun to find my style and I can't wait to see where it goes. I hope you'll stick around for my future builds and in the meantime, if you want to see my recent work on bettering my building, Check out my World in Progress series where I turn my original survival world into a building focused one. Or, if you're more of an extensive lore person, take a gander through the first Megabase playlist. Thank you so much for being here. You all are why I'm here doing this. I'm also curious how long each of you have been here, so let me know in the comments. Here's to many more years of improving Minecraft skills and having fun here together.